it's never been more clear to me that companies will do anything for a profit than when it comes to AI interviews and using basically chat GPT bots with filters and a voice to interview employees. Hey, it's Morgan, a virtual recruiter from You applied to a CNC machinist position we posted on Indeed and I think you'd be a great fit. Got a moment to chat about it? Uh, now, wouldn't you know it, I happened to find another post on Reddit about AI interviewing. Only this time, it's from the founder of a company using one of those AI bots to interview people, talking about how he's upset that the people are cheating his AI interview bot. Interview cheating has gotten out of hand. In our instructions for AI interviews, we tell candidates to be themselves and not to rely on any external resources. We, the company, can save a whole bunch of time and money by leveraging these great, cheap AI tools to replace human labor, but you, the employee, you even think about so much as trying to save some of your time by doing the same thing as us? That's cheating, okay? That's just, no, it doesn't work, it's not fair. Please stop. It's like when we're all in math class and the teachers would say, well, you still have to learn how to do this by hand because you're not always going to have a calculator. It turns out they were all wrong and we do pretty much always have calculators with us via our phone. Packed with tools, information, resources, knowledge, great ways to waste your time. And then down here it says, in the first six minutes of this candidate's conversation with Morgan, our AI interviewer, he copied and pasted every question she asked him into ChatGPT. So a couple things here, a lot of applications and interviews Ask different questions that have the same answer. So you copy and paste over and over. Do you have a driver's license? Yes. Are you willing to commute? Yes. But also, what's wrong with an employee being resourceful? Wouldn't that be a good trait to have? Someone that can think outside the box? You know, some companies, actually even certain branches of the military and intelligence agencies, prefer people that break the rules and do things like that because it shows they can think for themselves, especially when they're aware the situation makes absolutely no sense. But somehow, these days, thinking for yourself, trying to learn on your own or improve your own processes outside of a company, that's cheating. Now, the next thing you might be wondering is, how do they even know if this person is copying and pasting and changing tabs? Well, he actually attaches a picture that shows everything, and we'll get to that in just a sec. But down here, it says, Keep in mind, these weren't even technical questions. They were discussing his background and what he's looking for in a next role. So now it makes even more sense why this person would be copying and pasting, especially if they're talking about experience. Do you have five years experience? Yes. Do you think you're a fit for this job? Yes. And there are tons of companies and job sites that make you upload your resume and then immediately ask for you to copy and paste basically everything from your resume by hand into the website. So why do that? It says down here, to future applicants, please don't disqualify yourself. It is quite literally our job to prevent this kind of dishonesty. And I assume the reason you're interested in us in the first place is because you want to work with our team of world-class AI engineers. So yes, we can tell when you aren't being your true self. Now you can see here in the screenshot, he attaches all of the things that the candidate did during the AI interview. And then says up here, would anyone move forward with a candidate that blatantly disregarded the instructions like this? They tab switched, tab switched again, copy paste used, tab switch detected. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's probably what everyone should be doing. I mean, do you blame them? At this point, I don't. I'm kind of curious how they're doing this. Because if you're doing this in a browser, then you're limited to just basic event handlers. In fact, we could just ask AI how they're doing it with their AI. At least this is an actual good use case for AI, teaching people how to do things instead of replacing people. So I'll just copy and paste these two photos here, this one and this one. We'll put them over into ChatGPT and we'll just say something like, if I was an AI company interviewing people using an AI chatbot, probably built off of ChatGPT, such as yourself, how would I detect event handlers if it was just in a browser? Like if people were alt-tabbing to cheat me? Could you give me the code to test that right now actually in my own browser? to just paste that in my console to see if I left click my mouse. That would be extremely helpful. How would you detect specifically though, changing tabs and copying and pasting? And could you make it so that it gives me the output like they have in their photo? Thanks. Pro tip here is to always be nice to your chat GPT. Oh, look, it gave us everything we needed. So they just have this on their web page and they're just sending that information. What a way to say we trust our candidates right off the bat than by saying, don't be resourceful. Great, so we'll just take this over here, copy that. I'll just paste this in here. We'll hit enter. If I come back over here and click stuff, it should tell us if we've clicked. Oh, yep, mouse click, mouse click. Go back to here. Oh, yep, tab switch detected. Go back to chat GPT, yep. Tab switch return. Oh, but wait, I forgot. You're also detecting paste. Oh, there's copy used. And then there's paste. So as you can see here, their anti-cheating code software is very top tier. 
That took, what, all of three seconds to learn how to do with AI? But instead of teaching people how to use AI to do whatever it is they want or learn how to do whatever it is they want, they choose to replace people. Now, like most of you, I was pretty bummed out when I saw that I, I couldn't see the comments because you know it was it was blurred up here so obviously i went and found the original post said elsewhere but don't be so lazy you use ai to do your interviews employees are evaluating you too during an interview if you're so lazy and cheap that you can't send a person to interview me guess what i uh yeah exactly your people who use ai are cheats says the man who runs an ai company and ai is in his tagline three times Ferris says please give him a chance he could be using microsoft word and not necessarily chat gpt because people do that people write things out in microsoft word before they send the official answer because they don't want to accidentally send it. Aren't giving the candidate the courtesy of a non-AI interview, so why should the candidate be punished for giving you non-AI answers? 700 of these juicy comments in here. Oh yeah, and then there's this. I just happen to be scrolling past. Like, I've seen corporate simps before. Instead of helping his fellow student, he has chosen to create software called Safely, which monitors everything you do and reports back to the company. It's basically just a corporate rat application for checking to see if people are using AI to answer questions. Even though they're going to do that once they get the job, they can't do it before that. It's so, it's so dumb. I just take a look. So the tagline is an introduction back into safe interviews. But what's unsafe about people using tools they would use at work to do the interview for that work? I mean, that's my question. So the entire reason that this works is because you have to download a file that can actually change things outside of your browser. And if a website where you're doing an interview is running an event checker to see if you're leaving the page or whatever, then it's stuck inside of the browser. It can't open other stuff on your computer. It can't change that stuff, but this can. So essentially this is just like some sort of Trojan horse marketed as a way to document everything they're doing and send it to the company to rat them out. I thought the point of coding was to solve problems in the best way possible. If they get the right answer and it's a great answer and they can replicate that multiple times, who cares how they do it? How can you get a bachelor of science and not think to yourself, wait a minute, if companies can use AI to interview us, why can't I use the same tool to do the work that I would use probably the same day I get hired? No, nope, just lean into tracking people. Say no more to cheating software in any interview. Just install my not Trojan horse called safely. Anyways, back to Mason here. And I know on the Reddit post, you can see that, well, you can't see his company is blurred out, but on the real post, he is the founder at Tenzo AI, an AI sourcing and interview agents company where the people interviewing at this AI company can't use AI. So I thought it would be fun to take a look at Tenzo and Morgan and what they're all about. Okay, so this is Tenzo, the website here, his company, and they have a video where we can listen to a real candidate interview with Morgan, which is uh, Tenzo's version of joy, I guess. Hey, it's Morgan, a virtual recruiter from You applied to a CNC machinist position we posted on Indeed, and I think you'd be a great fit. Got a moment to chat about it? Yeah, sure. Great. Well, to start, can you tell me a bit about your experience as a CNC machinist and what's got you looking for a change? For sure. Uh, I've been a machinist for like seven years now. Started off as an operator at There I was mainly working with lathes. After that, I went to uh, as a machinist. You know, I've been doing a bit more of everything, some setup, some operating, you know, some programming. I've been happy. It's been good, but I, growth, growth slowed a bit, so looking maybe for something else. Okay, that makes sense. It sounds like you've got a really solid background in CNC machining. It's so funny because you know the bot just instantly transcribes and recognizes everything this person said and goes, great, sounds like you're really qualified after this person just spills like a paragraph out. Now, where are you in your application and interviewing process? Uh, honestly, you know, just, just started applying like 20 minutes ago and then uh, you, you called me, kind of caught me off guard. Uh, so yeah, this, this is my first interview. Well, yeah, you've got an awesome resume, so we wanted to follow up quickly. Congratulations, your resume passed the filter check and it automatically called you. And now you're talking to ChatGPT, but this time it's Morgan GPT. Uh, for sure. I mean, so at, at mainly working with the three and four axis lathes, uh, we were using Haas controls over there. Uh, doing a bit more of everything so also worked on mills got up to five axis here mainly Siemens controls uh, most of the work is still lazy so that's definitely you know where I'm, I'm the most comfortable uh, what, what are you guys gonna need you'd be primarily on lathes here too but if I can switch gears a bit could you describe a time when you had to troubleshoot 
an issue during the machining process? Uh, for sure. I mean, even just today. It's been backed by investors from these huge companies. I mean, we could make one of these in five minutes just vibe coding it. You know what? Maybe we'll do that in another video. Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Click the like button. Subscribe to see more content like this about AI and the state of the corporate world and how you can use AI to learn anything you want, how to hack anything you want, make anything you want, be anyone you want to be. But anyways, having said all of that, I hope everyone's doing really well out there. Having a great summer. And I'll see you in the next one.